Hello everyone, I just want to go over the planes that many people have been curious about. This is the biplane. The uh, Yak-3 fighter pilot. And the P-51 Mustang. These are all the fighter planes. They move very quickly and they're relatively fuel efficient. They're generally used for moving across long distances. If you right click and go in, you can open the trunk and store some things. And if you uh, shift left click, you can add fuel. As you up, uh, go up in tier, from tier 1 to tier 2 to tier 3, the fuel efficiency increases, so you're getting more for your fuel. Tier 1 and tier 2 fighters do not have any bombing capabilities. The tier 3 Mustang does have bombing capabilities, but very minimal. Now to the bomber planes. The bomber planes are substantially more expensive to build because they have more components. Before I move on, I will show you some of the basic components that go into making a fighter plane. You have the wings, engine, cockpit, trunk, and the wheels, as well as the seats. For the biplane, the biplane wing is mostly composed of wood and iron, relatively cheap. The big cost comes from the engine. The engine consists of pistons. V4 means four pistons. V6, six pistons. V8, eight pistons. Engine pistons are very expensive. They are composed of blocks of iron. So the V4 engine alone is going to cost you close to 37, uh, well, 32 blocks of iron plus seven iron. So about 33 blocks. And then you have the cost that comes from uh, the biplane wings. Now, moving on to the higher tier ones. See here, it's a bit disorganized. The X3 fighter plane, tier two plane wing. The reinforced tier two wing panel will instead require reinforced smooth stone which is nine smooth stuff. I might change the recipe for this because it seems a little bit cheap and honestly a uh, stone is often cheaper than wood, but for the time being, this is what it is. The cockpit is now instead replaced with a metal cockpit, which is composed of a minecart and reinforced glass. The v engine is a V6, which means it has two additional pistons, increasing the cost. Moving on to the tier 3, P-51 fighter, the V-8 engine, plus the tier 3 plane wing. This is of course substantially more expensive iron ones. Moreover, there is a bomb bay, which has a bomber module, and a bomb dropper. The engine itself also has a computer module. So these parts are um, they're relatively intuitive. The design is very similar across. This way it's not too confusing. Any of the custom items are going to be in uh, the light blue with the SR glow, little uh, enchantment glow, so you can distinguish them from normal items. I would warn you not to place these down, because if you do place them down and attempt to retrieve them, you will not get back the custom item. So be very careful. Going on to the bomber plane, we have the tier 1, which is a Spitfire, uses the tier 2 plane wing, Bombay, and a V8 engine. B24 Cosmic, tier 3 plane, V8 engine. And then for the BK Convoy bomber plane, V12 engine, which is two V6 engines together, an additional computer module, and the bomber wing which requires another right ingot on top of the TU3 plane wing. These crafting recipes are subject to change. I've discussed with Casper at extent, and he believes that some of the crafting recipes for many of these bombers are a little bit too cheap, especially considering that uh, iron golems or iron golem farms in this version are very powerful, and even if they were nerfed, still would not be very expensive at all. So that is how that works, so I'm gonna show you the Spitfire, B-24 Cosmic, BK Convoy. 
Now, the difference between these is increasing fuel efficiency, increasing health, um, as well as increased bomb power. So something that you can observe here is the health increases incrementally, as well as the fuel capacity. Because bombers are inherently more fuel, efficient, uh, fuel inefficient relative to the fighter planes, the fuel capacity has been increased. Let's go for a ride, shall we? I'm going to bring some TNT just to demonstrate the capacities of these uh, planes. So this is the fastest fighter. Let's head to the runway. So I don't get hit by too much radiation poisoning. So you want to hold the uh, W, space, and look up, and you will take off. W is the accelerator. Spacebar indicates that you're going up. So as you can tell, the fighter plane is going relatively fast. Uh, the Mustang, and it has um, some weak bombing capabilities, so I'm going to slow down a little bit so you guys can get an idea of that. So, not very strong at all. Granted, this is against terracotta. Imagine if perhaps we were uh, blowing up dirt. The damage is considerably higher. Oh, let's be careful, I don't want to crash the plane. Now, you may be wondering, how does plane damage take into account? Um, you know, how does durability exist for planes? So essentially the way that the plane will take damage is when you take damage. Because the plane is consistent of armor stands as an entity, it does not, um, you know, register as a physical object. I can't really break it. Um, but if you're inside the, the plane and you start taking damage, say if you're hit by fireworks or um, are attacked while on the plane, the plane will start to take damage. Uh, essentially, any damage that you take is passed off to the plane, and the plane will nullify a certain percentage of the damage. This, is a this plane is quite fast, and I have trouble controlling it. So let's go in the bomber. Spitfire. As you can tell, the Spitfire is considerably slower. It's taking quite some time to finally accelerate up to uh, take off speed. We're gonna hold up. All right. As you can tell, the damage is considerably a little bit higher than the, the Mustang. But we'll go do some bombing runs, shall we? taken. You have uh, significantly more damage from the Spitfire. Um, once again, we're debating maybe nerfing the planes, because at the moment they're quite powerful, especially when you consider they're the easiest, um, you know, the, the only method that you can use to bypass claims and start bombing other people. They don't do a lot of damage to stone, for example, or terracotta because of the hardness value, uh, but they do wreak havoc on a normal environment. This was me with the BK Convoy Cup Bomber, and I basically emptied out two stacks of TNT. As you can tell, that's pretty terrifying. Now, we've looked at the planes, but we haven't looked at the anti-air. This is kind of an important component. So, in the previous video I showed you guys the Volt Drill. Well, the Volt Drill is just a type of cannon. Uh, this is also a different type of cannon right here. This is the mortar. The mortar is very simple. It's constructed with two iron blocks and a heavy weighted pressure plate and a torch. And what you can do is you can put gunpowder in a chest and add fireworks. Oh, I need to clean it up. It's because I just recently built this mortar. Oh, no gunpowder. Oh, sorry. You can auto-load the, the mortar using redstone. So you can imagine... If a plane happened to be flying by through this...
you might end up getting hit by one of those rockets flying in the air, take damage, and the plane would suffer damage as well. And this would be one of the ways you'd be able to protect your city. So by having a series of mortars all around your entire city connected by a common redstone. Um, and if you were under uh, aerial bombing, you would basically, basically be able to go to a certain lever in the city, center of the city, turn on all the redstone, all your mortars turn on, and any planes trying to uh, come into the city would essentially be shot down. Um, now I'm going to show you what happens if you automate this. I'm just going to use a bit of a cheat method using the observer. Can be very powerful. Uh, also very costly in terms of gunpowder and firework rockets. So uh, having a good creeper farm up is going to be very essential. Um, and this was basically the very important mechanics um, involved in sieging cities, defending cities. And uh, you are also able to make use of a vault drill which can break through obsidian. We're debating adding this. Um, as well as normal cannons, such as this. Excuse the radiation. So I just loaded some iron in there. So that's a standard cannon that just fired. So there are definitely different types of ammunition. So you have iron nuggets which make the pea shooter. The pea shooter itself does not do any structural damage, but it does do uh, damage against people, and each bullet is kind of weak, but um, definitely you would not want to be standing in front of this or you might take some serious damage. You also have Scattershot, which is essentially a shotgun type ammunition. I need to clean. Yeah, so the cannons need to be cleaned regularly. One more time. So you could definitely use this strategically in your in your um, either defenses or offenses. In your offenses, you can use long-range cannons to be able to siege cities and try and take down their walls. Um, in defenses, you can definitely use things like pea shooters, pea shooters and scatter shots to defend your city. So these are kind of the plugins that we might be using in order to sort of diversify the gameplay. Using typical TNT cannons, redstone TNT cannons are totally acceptable, and honestly, Many of these plugins are less efficient than the vanilla, but they offer different ways of confronting problems. Um, we'll be going over more about the cannon mechanics a little bit later once we have them balanced out, um, but that's all for today. Thank you all for watching.